two years in prison for a murder they did not commit. You are free to go, and we are adjourned. <laughs> Loved ones cried tears of joy and embraced a Jacksonville uncle and his nephew, wrongfully convicted of killing a woman back in the 70s. Shortly after the celebration in court, Nathan Meyer sat quietly with his hands on his Bible as State Attorney Melissa Nelson detailed the months of investigative work to exonerate him and his uncle, Clifford Williams, who was on death row. My mother, she died while I was on death row. And um, I just wanted to get out of we was maybe my sick kids. They was gone, and it wasn't nobody but them. I give all my praise to Jesus Christ. Because number one for them, for putting them in my life, I'll still be sitting in something County right now today. Because no one listened to me. So I look at it as a blessing. About an hour and a half ago, the men walked out of the state attorney's office smiling and with their arms around each other. Myers then got down and kissed the ground, Praise the praising the Lord Praise the for Lord. his new freedom. Myers says the first thing he wants to do as a free man is make up for lost time with his family. Everything else he says comes second. Police say the real killer confessed to the crime before he died. He admitted he was the one who ambushed two women while they were asleep in their apartment back in 1976. One of those women was killed, the other survived. Tarek is standing by to give us a look at the financial compensation Williams and Myers could be awarded from the state. We begin with News 4 Jacks reporter Jim Pickett, who was there when these men were set free. Jim. Tom, quite an emotional day here at the state attorney's office, also in the courtroom today. You know, it's a long time in uh, prison for them, a short time in court as they learned the freedom. This investigative report right here detailed everything that had happened and the mistakes that were made. Here's the history of the case. Many of those involved have since died. In May of 1976, when Jeanette Williams was shot and killed in this apartment, Nina Marshall was also shot. She said two men came into the bedroom and started shooting. She identified Williams and Myers as the gunmen, though evidence at the time appeared to show the shots came from outside the apartment, not inside. Williams and Myers told police they were at a party down the street and that a number of witnesses collaborated that story. But in trial, where they were convicted, that alibi evidence was ignored. The first trial in this case was a mistrial. In the second, the state offered Myers a deal of five years if he would testify against his uncle. He turned that down. Prosecutors told the jury the shooting was over a $50 debt owed by the victim. The whole case boiled down to eyewitness testimony that Williams and Myers were the shooter. The investigation by the integrity unit shows that crucial evidence was ignored during that trial, that the bullets were actually fired by one person, not inside, but from outside the room. Despite that, both men were convicted in a two-day trial. The jury recommended life, but the judge changed that to the death penalty for Williams. That death sentence was later overturned by the state Supreme Court in 1980. In later years, another man, Nathan Lawson, told others that he had killed the woman, not Williams, and he wanted to make things right before he died. He didn't want to turn himself in. Both Williams and Myers had asked for this case to be reviewed again, and that's where we are today. State Attorney Melissa Nelson said they learned quite a bit from all of this and they will continue to learn and go back and look at things. You know, uh, the victim in this case, Jeanette Williams, her family was not here at the hearing. They did write letters saying, you know, that they are, uh, that they hope that the innocent and the guilty will be forgiven by the Lord, but they're not quite sure how innocent those men really are. But the, all in this investigation, it shows that there were plenty of mistakes, and now the court believes that those two were not involved. We're live from the state attorney's office, Jim Pickett, Channel 4, the local station. Jim, what did they tell you are their plans for tonight? You know, I did ask them coming out, and they said, you know, I said, hey, what's for dinner? What are you going to be doing? They said they can have for dinner anything they want. We know uh, that Clifford Williams uh, went to visit a gravesite of a relative. We understand that was going to happen. And Nathan Myers is probably going to be moving to Orlando shortly. So that's their plans, at least for now. Jim Pickett reporting live from downtown. Thank you, Jim.
It's a rare case for Jacksonville, but according to organizations that gather data on exonerations, it happens more often than we might think. I-Team investigator Tarek Miner joins us now with a look at how many prisoners have been cleared in the past year and a half after being wrongly convict convicted. Mary, Tarek. the data is just eye-opening. The National Registry of Exonerations it was founded in 2012. They provide detailed information about exonerations dating back to 1989. Here is their most recent data. Already this year in 2019, 33 people have been exonerated across the country for crimes including murder, sexual assault, drug violations, and violent crimes. Now the reasons why these sentences were reversed include the re-examination of forensic evidence, new DNA testing, mistaken identities, false confessions, and even in some cases the police officers framed the suspects. Now last year in 2018, 93 people were exonerated according to their database. 23 of the accused released from prison that year were as the result of DNA testing. Now, according to a Time magazine study, which was conducted last year, out of every 100 people sentenced to the death penalty, four of those are likely innocent, but on average, only two of those prisoners are exonerated. A wrongfully convicted individual found innocent is entitled to compensation, as these two men are. Florida law states that these men should receive $50,000 annually and up to a maximum of $2 million as long as they don't have any other prior felony convictions. Now, one of the co-founders of the National Registry of Exoneration says that these cases in their study merely point to a much larger number of people who may have been wrongfully convicted that we do not know about. Mary, Tom. Thank you, Tarek. Our coverage continues on NewsForJax.com, where you can watch uncut video of the court hearing to set Williams and Myers free. Just look on the homepage.